gentlemen, I tried to uh, do this yesterday, but I got interrupted by my nephew calling me on my mom's phone because I went to McDonald's and had gotten something, had gotten them food, and then, you know, was walking home. But I want to talk about this whole AJ Styles, Dixie Carter world title storyline currently going on. Now, we were all, now for a lot of us, we all looked at it like, oh, well, W, oh, well, Dick TNA is, you know, Re, you know, copying WWE, you know, they're just doing the summer of punk and they're calling it the winter of styles or the fall and winter of styles, you know. You know, it's not the summer of punk, it's the winter of AJ Styles, or something like that. And what was fu what's funny about this, what's ironic about this, and what's funny ironic, everybody said that even though it's a similar storyline, the biggest di the biggest difference and probably most positive difference is TNA's doing something WWE didn't have the guts to do. See, WWE, when they did their version of Summer of Punk, had the opportunity to do the same thing. I mean, you have CM, I mean, come on, you have literally CM Punk sitting on the rampway, okay? you have him literally sitting on the rampway after he's given permission to go out and say whatever the hell he wants, you know, whatever the heck he wants, Go out there and literally do a work shoot on the company, the ins and outs of it, the people, the stars. And you have freaking John Cena, the guy he's going to face in his hometown for the title, sitting in the ring going like, you've got to be kidding. It's like, he, you know, just sitting in the ring completely dumbfounded by the, by the fact that here's a guy that's shoot, basically shooting on the company, shooting on him, shooting on the ins and outs. Outs. And then you have him come out, and then you have him saying, oh, when I win the title, I'm going to go probably back to Ring of Honor, or I'll go to Japan, or I'll go to Mexico and defend the belt. And yet, what do you do? Yet, what do you do? You have him re-sign at the beginning or the day of the show, probably around the beginning or the middle of the show, actually, I'm not sure. You have him re-sign. You have him win the belt. You have him leave the arena after he rents it, put the belt in his refrigerator. Then... You have him stay away for about a week, and then what do you do? And then what's the only, and then what do you do? You bring him back the following Monday. After you've crowned two new WWE champions in Rey Mysterio and then John Cena. You have two new champions crowned, Rey Mysterio John, and then later on John Cena. And then you have CM Punk trot out. Uh, and according to what some people say, John Cena step, standing in the ring with Triple H and Punk's music hits and he's coming out and he's like, he's not supposed to be here, what the heck's going on? Or, or like, that's not, I, what was it, what was he saying? Who, who's the money in the bank? Oh yeah, that's not Del Rio. Oh, that, you have him sitting in the, I mean you have John Cena in the ring after he beats Rey Mysterio. You have Triple H come out with him and then you have CM Punk come out of the, out of the back and you have John Cena going like, that's not Del Rio. Like, he didn't even know what the heck was going on until later on. Until later on, he was clued in or whatever. The, the point is, WWE had an opportunity to really work with this storyline that TNA is currently doing. They did. And the only closest thing they did of CM Punk being outside of the company, the closest they ever did was him taking a picture, t taking and tweeting a picture of him at a Chicago Cubs game, talking about, oh, well, they're having a tournament for a new champion, but how can they have a tournament when their champion's right here? they got a new champion when they got their champion right here. Or it's a, or you have him doing the whole Comic-Con deal. Like he's invading WWE and he's like at the San Diego Comic-Con saying, hey, I'm right here, look what I got, you know, you're trying to crown a new champion, here's what I got. And then the only non-wrestling appearance you have with CM Punk is at an independent show, I can't think of it, where after Cole Cabana, his best friend, wins a match at the end of the event, he brings out CM Punk. It's the only closest thing you get of him appearing as WWE champion for appearing as the WWE champion in another wrestling promotion outside of WWE. And then only later on do you find out, especially when you watch the CM Punk Best in the World DVD, that he was already signed with the company and this was just their way of doing the Summer of Punk.
or beginning of it, kind of giving you that whole, oh, look, he's a WWE champion without a contract, and he's making all these other appearances. You know, and it's, to me, it's like, w, it's like, to me, WWE had the opportunity to really kick it into a next gear with this angle, but they didn't. And that is something that, from a positive standpoint, TNA is not afraid to do. Yeah, they have this whole Impact 365 that they're playing into the storyline with Dixie and all that, saying, with Dixie basically threatening legal action, and this and that. But, you, but again, from a positive standpoint, you give TNA credit, because at least, from what people have said, it increased the viewership, the rating and viewership of the show this past week, because now you have people talking about the product in some ways, because of what's going on. I mean, you have AJ Styles, the champion, the legit champion, if you will, going out and defending the belt around the world, allowing TNA to take advantage and show WWE, hey, we're willing to do what you never had the guts to do. And thus, they're getting people to talk about the product. They're getting people to tune into the show. They're getting people to tune in on YouTube. to all Impact 365. And that's not the end of it. You know, and that's not just the end of it. You know? You got all this. You got all this, and, you know, that's not the end of it, because maybe you're going to have AJ appear this Thursday. We don't know. But here, here's the thing, folks. Here's the thing. TNA... The whole T my, my thoughts on this whole TNA AJ world title thing is, again, TNA is doing what WWE never had the guts to do. You know, it give them credit. It's a positive direction to go in. You're getting people talking about the product. But also, what WWE, what not WWE, but what TNA is trying to do is, you know, through the storyline, they're trying to get AJ Styles, Styles to basically show Dixie Carter how important the world title really is, or how important it should be for the company. Basically, you have AJ Styles saying, hey, look, I'm doing what real world champions are supposed to do. I'm going out and I'm defending against the best competition in the world. Not just the best competition in the company, but around the world. Basically, it sounds like to me that the direction that the storyline is going in, the direction the storyline is going in, is you have AJ Styles essentially telling Dixie Carter, hey, you want to crown a new world champion? That's fine. But it's, or well not, that's fine. Basically, what AJ's trying to tell us, hey, look, you can crown your new world champion all that, your know, new champion all you want. But the truth is, you're good. I'm going to keep doing this. Or whatever. If AJ makes an appearance at Turning Point this Thursday night, either in part one of it or part two, and there's a confrontation between him and Dixie, I wouldn't be surprised if Dixie says, if you know they have Dixie or somebody representing Dixie saying, AJ, look, you are the world champion, but it doesn't mean you defend around the world. I mean, I'd be, I mean, I won't be surprised if they use other sports comparisons, like, like the NFL, like saying, okay, when you have a Super Bowl, when you have an NFL team win the Super Bowl, they become the world champions of football, or the world champions of the NFL, right? Well, does that mean they go around the world and defend against other international football teams? No! They're the world champions of the NFL, which is here in the United States. And the same thing with uh, maybe Major League Baseball or the NBA. It's like, okay, you have two international teams there, Toronto teams, but honestly, it's the, honestly, that's all here in North America. So, when you're a world champion, it doesn't mean you, you know, defend around the world. It means you're the world champion of your company. It means you're the very best of your company. You know, it's kind of like with 
And you know, and I wouldn't be surprised if she uses Bellator as an example. Says, okay, what about Bellator? Bellator world champion. He's the bet. When that person becomes the world champion of Bellator, it doesn't mean they go defend against other people outside of Bellator. No. It means they defend against the vet. It means they are the very best in Bellator. It doesn't mean they go out and defend. It means they defend against those in Bellator. I know it sounds confusing, right? But I'm not going to be surprised if that if there's a cop if AJ returns, which I'm not saying he will or not, but if he makes an appearance this Thursday, I would not be surprised if that's basically um, the direction that they would or direction or that or they would go in or that's what they would have Dixie or somebody say to AJ, like, hey, look. Just because you, you are the world champion doesn't mean you go out and defend around the world. It means you defend in the company. It means you're the very best. It means you are the best champion of the, of one of the two biggest wrestling promotions in the world. It doesn't mean you just go out and defend around the world. Now, again, I know that sounds a little confusing, but to me... That's, I think that's one of the directions they may go in this Thursday or down the line. They're going to go in that direction with someone telling AJ, maybe Dixie or somebody, saying, hey, look, just because you are the world champion, it doesn't mean you go around the world and defend against the best in the world. It means you defend against the best in the company. It means you're the world champion of our company. You know, so, again, I'm not sure if that's the direction they would go in or, or not, but... Um, well, we'll see. But to me, I think this is a positive step for them because even through the storyline, I think what TNA is trying to do is they're trying to legitimize the fact that, hey, yeah, we are the second biggest company in the world. We're trying to grow, and we're going to grow by doing what another company won't have the guts to do, and we're going to associate with other promotions in and outside of the United States. We're going to have our champions defend their belts in and outside of the United States in other promotions. And I think that's what it's also going to lead to. I think AJ doing this through storyline is going to lead to eventually something happening to where AJ, if they decide to book AJ to go over in the storyline, you know, to be victorious in the storyline, that all the champions, and this includes the Bros Man, so the tag team champions, Saban, who's the X Division champion, Gail Kim, who's the uh, Knockouts champion, it basically means they're going to have all of them defend against other teams, other knockouts, other X Division like wrestlers from around the world, from different promotions in the United States. I think this is basically what the storyline is leading towards. And that, again, to me, that's a positive thing on WWE's, I mean, not WWE, but TNA's part. That's a positive thing. And, I, and, and you know, you could judge the storyline all you want, but it is a positive thing for TNA to take that first step. I mean, think about it this way. What, think about it this way. If this is the direction they go in, if this is where they're going with the story, if this is where they're going, don't be surprised. All right, so let, like, let, let's say in promotion-wise, let's say promo-wise, when AJ makes his return, either it's this Thursday or whenever, and he confronts Dixie, don't be surprised if Dixie comes out and says, look, the reason I don't want you to defend outside of the company, the reason I don't want my champions defending outside of the company and other places is because I don't want a chance the fact that you guys may lose the belts and then I'm going to have to, then my company is going to have to acknowledge somebody that's not under contract to us as our champion. Yeah. That, that basically would, would be the situation. It's like, it's like, let's say TNA, let's say AJ was to defend the title against, let's say, uh, for example, AJ was to defend the title against Cole Cabana in an independent promotion here in the States or internationally, and Cole Cabana beat it. Basically, I could see Dixie saying, basically Dixie would say something like, if someone was to beat you for that belt and become world champion, I would have to acknowledge that person as our world champion, but, the, but I'd have to acknowledge also the fact that they're all world champion, but they're not under contract to us. They're not part of our company. And that's basically what she's, uh, and I'm, again, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the direction this storyline goes in with, a, with promos. But again, I believe the ultimate destination for this I believe the ultimate destination for this, um, if you will, 
I believe the ultimate destination for this is going to be hopefully AJ being booked to go over in the storyline but also opening the door to say hey all champions are going to be able to defend outside of TNA and I think that's what they're trying to do they're trying to use this storyline to firmly establish that their championships are indeed actual world championships and they mean something it mean that they mean something that their champions will defend against the very best around the world and the very best in other promotions and all that give everybody out there an opportunity because here's the thing even though predictability wise you could have let's say Gail Kim go to a Smoky Mountain television taping right let's say you can have Gail Kim defend the knockouts title at an NWA Smoky Mountain event or a Shimmer event if you will and lose the title title and lose the title, but then regain it probably like the following night, at least you would acknowledge, yeah, Gail Kim lost it to this uh, member of the Shim, uh, lost the knockouts title to Mischief of the Shimmer roster, but she regained it the following night. That's basically, that's basically what this um, whole situation is about. That's what this whole storyline I think he's leading towards. You know, and again, this is something that WWE dropped the ball on. And I can understand maybe from a business standpoint why WWE didn't want to do this. And it's not just a business standpoint, it's a historical record standpoint. They don't want the chance, they didn't want to chance the fact that, okay, we'll have CM Punk go out and defend the belt around the world for a few weeks or a few months, or maybe a month or so, have him defend the belt around the world, blah, blah, blah. They don't want the chance the fact that CM Punk would agree to say, okay, I'm going to face Carl Anderson in New Japan for the title and defend my title against him. And oh, I'm going to put Carl, and I've agreed to put, let, let Carl Anderson actually beat me, but then we've agreed that I'll regain it. You see, WWE doesn't want a chance the fact that you could have someone like Carl Machine Gun Anderson in the record books as, as, a, as being a WWE champion, and yet he was never under contract to the company. See, they didn't want a chance that. They want the fans, the WWE Universe fans, to acknowledge and look historically at who was champion under contract with them, not who's not under contract with them, or something like that. That that was that's the way. That's why I think WWE dropped the ball. That's why I think WWE dropped the ball. Now some might argue, well, I think they also dropped. Now some might say, oh, well, WWE dropped the ball because they wanted to kind of show everybody, hey, you think we're going to give you this? But guess what? We're going to just make a parody of it. Who knows? But the point is, WWE had an opportunity to capitalize. They didn't, but they didn't do that. So TNA is taking that opportunity, and they're capitalizing on it right now, which to me is going to lead to an opening of many doors to where all the champions are going to defend their titles, not just in TNA, but internationally, in other, as well as in other independent promotions. I mean, for example, you could have Chris Saban go to NWA Smoky Mountain TV and defend the X Division title there against one of their best uh, competitors. You can have the Bros Mans defend the tag titles against the tag team, the best tag team in AAA, or, or best tag team in New Japan, or best tag team in PWG. You can have them do that. And that's basically what this would be all be about. It's, in a sense, it sounds like with, through the storyline, in a sense, it sounds like through the storyline, with TNA using AJ as, and he, he's being the catalyst, if you will, you know, he's being that building block, or that rebuilding block, that rebuilding foundation, that catalyst, if you will. Basically, what they're having AJ do here is essentially say, hey, we're going to bring things back to the way they were before things got screwed up. We're going to bring things back to the days when we were associated with people, when we were associated with the NWA, and we were allowed to defend the titles all over the world, as well as in other independent promotions, against the very best they have to offer, if you will. And again, to me, that's a positive on TNA's part. And what is leading to a lot of people talking about the product right now through the Impact 365 and helping that rating increase a little bit. So, to me, I give TNA thumbs up on and hopefully they book AJ to come out on top victoriously overall in the storyline and thus lead 
to a re thus lead to a resurgence in interest for TNA because now you would hopefully, if this is the direction they're going to go in, hopefully you'll be able to have a company out there, the second biggest company out there, say, hey, look, come out and say, hey, look, we're willing to defend our titles all over. We're willing to have our champions defend their, champ their titles all over the world, unlike some other companies. So, hopefully that's, so I'm hoping that's the direction it's leading towards because it seems to be that way. Because you got to also look in between the lines. One of the things you got to look at in between the lines is Gail Kim. Gail Kim's issuing an open challenge to anybody outside of the company. You have Bully Ray invading the House of Hardcore. You know, so there you go. To me, this is all good. This is all good stuff, and it's over. And it's all part of this overall picture of not just TNA hitting that reset button and getting back to basics, getting back to what made them who they were, but it's overall leading towards the fact that because AJ Styles right now is the catalyst in his storyline with Dixie Carter and the world title, that he's the catalyst of this whole thing, that it's all going to lead to the fact that TNA is going to truly become that international product that says, hey look, we don't just have to defend against the very best in our company, have our champions defend against the very best in this company, we'll have them defend against outside of the, we'll have them defend outside of the company, around the world, in Japan, in Mexico, in Canada, in Europe, in NWA Smoky Mountain, in PWG, if you will. In PWG, in IWA, in WWC, you know, in FWE, you know, have them defend around the world. To where people can actually enjoy them. In Extreme Rising even maybe. Who knows. But have them defend around the world. And in other independent promotions. And give everybody an opportunity. And even, and even if it's predictable the champions are going to retain. Have them defend it to the point. Have them defend it to the point. That. Who. who to if somebody in an independent promotion or internationally gives you a great gives your champion a great match even in defeat even in defeat that you'll be saying you know what I want that person on our roster there you go that's one of the main reasons as well but to me I give TNA a lot of credit for doing this it's gonna definitely reopen interest reinvigorate interest if it's done correctly, I pray. I know I'm not the only fan out there that prays this is done correctly. And it seems to be that case right now. But TNA is really doing a good job right now. And hopefully they keep it up and they don't drop the ball. So uh, that's all I'm going to say on this. Let me know what you guys think down below. Do you think this is what we're leading towards real soon? Take your time in watching this video. I know it's long. And I will talk to you all later. God bless. Take care. Comments and video responses are indeed welcome. Peace out.